Hi, hey, thanks for tuning in. I'm Gary Lewinian. I'm the uh, current detachment commander for the Sons of American Legion in, here in the state of Michigan. And we're visiting with you today from the uh, department in Lansing. And I've got some guests with me, and we're going to talk about some things that we hope you'll find of interest. And we'll start over here on my left. And would you introduce yourself, sir? My name is Roy Wellen. I'm with Squadron 514, Ida, Michigan. Greg Price, Squadron 396, out of Garden City, Michigan. I'm Dominic Merlington, out of Squadron 287, Cedar Springs, Red Flannel Town. I'm Keith Tyler, Squadron 287, out of Cedar Springs, Michigan. Kind of what happens is we all have sort of diverse experiences because some of us come from large squadrons, some of small squadrons, some of us have been in for years and years, and some of us are fairly new. So we want to talk about your first experience when you first joined the Suns. How it is you became an officer and what off what that first office was and what was that like for you, Roy? Well, when I first joined, uh, actually you asked me to join if I wanted to go see what the American Legion is all about. And of course what I said was, I drink enough, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, well, let's go see what it's like. And, I went, and I've never known you to lie. Well, that's true. <laughs> and I went and we went on different uh, trips and, and I've never seen nothing like it. And I, Totally enjoyed myself doing this. This is one great thing. And the American Legion, the Sons of American Legion, does a lot for people, for veterans. And your first office? My, first, my first office was Sergeant at Arms. Uh, why did you do that, or how did that happen? Well, uh, our Sergeant at Arms wanted to step down because he's been doing it for many years, and I was helping him out, and all the patrons asked me if I would do it. So at, as, at the squadron level, then, what are you doing as the sergeant arms? What do you, what's required? Do you just stand by the door and beat on anybody that gets out of order, or what do you do? <laughs> no, we just, we, uh, what I do is before the meeting starts, I go in and I set all the flags up, and um, then I have to, of course, make sure this thing's clean and cool. And, cool. <laughs> and at the end of the end of the day, I make sure it's all clean and you know, lights are shut off and air conditioners are shut off, and also. Sometimes you have to <laughs> calm people down. You know, of course, that's what Sergeant Arms is for. And also, you introduced all the guests. Um, There's a, of course, if you're having elections, obviously, yes. you have to make sure that everybody's entitled okay. to be there. And I, uh, yes. Roy and I belong to the same post, so I will tell you this little story about Roy. It is his responsibility, as it is all uh, Sergeant Arms, to introduce guests. And um, we had a brand new post commander who happens to be a dual member, fortunately, and a good-natured fellow, fortunately. And he came to visit us at our post, and uh, our commander says, uh, Sergeant Arms, have any guests? Nope, no guests, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we didn't exactly give him his props, did no. we? <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing says you have to be perfect, right? right. Thank the Lord. Okay, Greg, what are you thinking, sir? What, what, well, what was your when I first got started 35 years ago, I, I, I went in again as a Sergeant at Arms, you know, you went in there, you just and you check the guys' IDs or whatever. But we weren't a really active squadron at that time. And the following year, I got promoted up into being the commander. And so, trying to figure out what we were doing. And at that time, uh, we were referred to as just SAL members. They used uh, the actual word and, just. And just. Uh, yeah. In fact, uh, they, they, you know, I could just tell you stories. But anyways. Uh, we had a thing where we were cleaning up the post, and I was there, and I went in the back, the old post, and helped clean up the stove, and, and then you know, helped clean up the yard and stuff like that. And we were in there, and uh, the uh, commander, Bill Kalaitis, at the time, somebody referred to me as just an SAL member when we were sitting there. And Bill turned around and said, let me tell you about that SAL guy. When we were cleaning the post up, he was here to help. When we were cleaning the yard up, he was here to help. What did you do? Oh wow! He's an important wow. member. After that, we started to gain, and then we then we were more accepted into what was going on, and then we we became more involved with the auxiliary and the women, and uh, we we did things for bingos, and we went to the uh, seniors and did things. How big a squadron was it when I first when you first joined? Well, it was probably uh, about 18 people. Really? Uh, yeah, now, now we got like 170, so. Oh, wow, yeah, we, wow. We, we built it. And of course, you know you can start with just 10. Yes, That's sir. That's all it takes yes, to form a, yeah. form a squadron. And we're gonna, we're gonna really hit that hard because there are so many posts that could benefit from having a, a SAL squadron, and we're gonna figure out how to get some of those done. Yes, sir. It only takes 10 people, some of them can be dual members even. Yeah. So. We're gonna, I'm gonna skip you for if you don't mind. Oh, sure. Past commander, this is my mentor. He was commander just, just before me. And, and um, my whole theme in life is uh, what would Dominic do? Oh, so, you're so, flattering. 
<laughs> so Keith, what was your experience? What was your first office? My first experience in uh, SAL, uh, when I first walked into the building, I had one of our, uh, our present adjutant say, there's going to be our new commander. And unfortunately, I didn't want that position, uh, but I took on the job of first vice, which basically fills in for the commander if he cannot be there. Uh, but that was my first job. That's what I, we were talking about that a little bit off camera. And that's like just getting thrown into the deep end of the pool, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> right. Did you, have a, did you have a good commander ahead of you so that you could learn from him? I mean, did you have a role model to look at? Yes, I did. <laughs> my commander, Dominic Morgan, who happened to be his commander at the time. Oh, and you're the so George I, Washington of the Sons of the And I didn't pay him to say that either. This is well, Father well, Dominic. Well, <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Anyhow, after a while and stuff, we had uh, uh, one of the gentlemen step down for finance, so I took over that job. And uh, so that's been a couple of my positions that I hold in the Sons of the American Legion. Those are, those are actually two of the most important jobs in First Slice, of course, dealing with membership and certainly dealing with the funds. You know, right. So. Oh yeah, that was a big deal. And how big was your squadron then when you first? When I first, I believe we only had roughly about 120, wasn't it? Yeah, that's pretty Somewhere sad. Somewhere around there. Sad. Now we're up around 180. Yep. See, see, I'm not sure you can say it only 120 in the same sentence. You know? <laughs> <laughs> there were a whole lot of squadrons that well, were close to that. The squadron had been in existence a lot longer than what I had. Well, that's because it's the uh, flannel so city, right? right? And all the different yeah, American people. Legion posts that I, uh, I mean, not many, but uh, the past uh, posts that I belong to as a dual member, uh, I was never asked, was I eligible for the Sons of the American Legion? And Dominic, when I met him, asked me that question. And I said, yeah, I'm eligible. And so I got involved into the Sons of the American Legion for that reason. And, and, and you've I'm done an awful lot of things beyond that. You've been, I know you've been district commander and, and you've done a whole lot. Of course, you've been a state historian traveling over the entire state, you know, taking pictures and trying to, to uh, document all of the things that are happening in the state of Michigan. Thank yes, you for that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and a very valuable member. So now you know why. Being dual is being cool. <laughs> Speaking of cool, that's a great segue. Now we're into Dominic. Oh, boy. Just relax. Yeah. 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 Thanks, so, uh, and you have a great history to, to talk about, really. Yeah, basically I do. I know, <clears throat> like Greg, many, many moons ago when I first got involved, the squadron in Cedar Springs had just gotten chartered. And actually, my first job was a bingo worker. <laughs> like maybe a lot of us have done that, too. Is that an elected position? Oh, or? no, no. no. I'll tell you, that in our Haiti, we made a lot of money. And um, actually, I became the finance officer for the squadron. And there was a lot of responsibility with that position. But I just kept at it. And it doesn't involve an overwhelming amount of time. You know, you got to just keep good records. I wrote checks to the post, to whomever. It was just basically organization that... I thought I had a good handle on it. No, I wasn't an accountant, but I did a good job. We had, you know, the uh, uh, post assisting us and you know, auditing the books, the whole nine yards. Did things by the book, you know, so it was a great job. And uh, I was proud to be able to do that. And then uh, after that, I moved into the position of commander. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yes. Um, and it was an honor to, be, uh, to do that, too. But you had some mentors. Yourself. Well, I had some. I had some fantastic mentors. What I had, my my uncle Russell actually became the detachment commander for Michigan, and then after that, my father did, Ronnie Merlington. Uh, I believe me, at that time, I had no idea I had ever um, aspired to that position. I had not any idea. There was a period of time where I got uninvolved in the SAL, but I, when I got reinvolved again and started coming to the detachment level, um, then. 
it became more of a reality that that may happen. And it did, it was, it was an honor to serve as commander of uh, the detachment and the squadron. And believe it or not, unlike, you might think there's a big difference, there's not. The commander, he's the leader. He, you know, he keeps, uh, delegates some authority, he you know, runs the meetings, um, but he's not God, so to speak. Um, I'm not sure how else eloquently to put that. I don't know if you can no, explain what, what, what you found is certainly king. Isn't king. commander. No, he's not. He's not. <laughs> no, he's not king. So, but, uh, no, it's, it's been a wonderful position, a wonderful experience. And in case you can't tell, I'm sure if you've been listening, you probably noticed this that. Uh, Keith, I've probably known you what, three years, four years, maybe you only two, and maybe you only three, and I've known Roy for only like five, but Roy and I live in the same neighborhood, belong to the same post, and um, in case you can't tell, we're all friends. I mean, we enjoy each other's company, we respect each other, and that's one of the things, benefits we got from the Sun, because I've met so many wonderful people, and, yeah, and you guys, are, I consider all I of us friends. Yeah, and, and, so and I know sure their did. wives, and they're, they're marvelous people, and in fact, you and I are going to go to Washington, D.C. together. That's yes, going to be a fun trip. We're looking forward we're to that. We're going to be out to uh, Arlington. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, Get to lay a, lay a wreath out there. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's going to be I'm fun. I'm sure we'll do it, and talk to some of the legislators and senators out there, and and uh, find out what's going yeah, on. That's great. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And, yeah. uh, and personally, from my experience, was like, you know, I uh, um, joined in 04, but I was still working, so I didn't do anything. Um, and then I, in 09, I got downsized, and then I was basically retired. And uh, they convinced me to be chaplain. And I think the reason for that is that the commander at the time knew that my dad had been a Sunday school teacher, and he knew that I wouldn't come to the meetings drunk. So <laughs> you're an ideal candidate to be chaplain. <laughs> So and then we went on. We went on from there, and, uh, and it, was, it was a wonderful. It was a wonderful experience, and uh, I really had no aspirations of ever becoming detachment commander. Because quite honestly, I never thought I was qualified, especially when you follow people like Greg and people like Dominic. But uh, the, these guys told me, Gary, we'll help you any way we can help you. Anything you need to know, we'll show you. And these men are men of their word, yeah. and uh, it's been just a marvelous experience, with the exception of. Uh, Getting married and having three sons, this has been the most exciting thing that's happened in my life. Yeah. And things get better. It's, it's, it's today, we're in, we can all assess to that that uh, we're a big part of the post now. They accept us. We're in equal. Absolutely. And, yes. and yeah. uh, it's nice sometimes, and you, you will find out traveling around, and I know you have, and mm -hmm. I did, when you go into a post and they'll say, if it wasn't for the SAL, we wouldn't be able oh, to keep our doors open. We're dead. On your job. You know what I mean? And what a, what, a, what a thing is to work along with the veterans, and, and, and they treat you almost as an equal. Yeah. You know, it, uh, it's a family. Yeah, it is. It's, 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 it's why they call it the Legion. And just like your dad, I mean, you can you know you can love your dad all you want to, but you can't tell your dad what he isn't isn't going to do. Right. You know? yeah, so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's thanks, how they call it. Thanks, thanks, <laughs> thanks, thanks for joining. It's been a fun visit. I want to thank the department for providing us this opportunity and. Mark Sutton for his direction and film work, and Mark is really a one-man band. And I thank, thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs>